believe the last time uh, we had uh, uh, talked about was going to Matthew chapter 24. Yeah. So uh, why don't you just go ahead and get us started? Well, we're going to, in the next, I don't know how many weeks it take. A lot for us to do Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. And it's on uh, the end times. Mm -hmm. It's what it's about. And it's really, really, really good. I mean, we're going to get in some really, really good stuff. Right. And right. Uh, we'll try to break it down and make it as simple as we can, but it's really good. Right. I mean, it's really good. But uh, what we're going to be studying is Matthew 24 and... What does that kind of outline? Like, how does... Sort of outline that. What okay. That? I, I made... Uh, nine notes here i read this book but this doctor had wrote and and i really focused on matthew 24 and 25 and and i made some notes about his outlines mm -hmm. and uh i cannot think the guy's name but he had a book and i read read several books doing this on these chapters and uh, I've really got to study a lot. My wife, she come in last night and she said, you still reading? Because I was reading when she liked <laughs> But I've got to, you know, got to spend a lot of time doing it. Right. But it's really good. So, uh, of course, we're going to talk just for a second about his first statement that this guy made in it. They're real good. He made nine statements, and they're really, really good. And I want to read it. And he said, Matthew bracketed the Lord's ministry between two sermons. The Sermon on the Mount, which was practical. Mm -hmm. And the Olive Discord, which was prophetic. Right. So Matthew's chapter <coughs> 5, 6, and 7 <coughs> was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. You know, that was right after he was baptized mm -hmm. and started preaching. That he gave the Sermon on the Mount, and that was about how we're, how we're to live. Right, right. Well, at the very end of his ministry, he gives Matthew chapter 24 and 25, and it's called the Olive Discord and Discourse. And and it happens right before he's arrested and crucified. Right. So his ministry, and these are his it starts two with with the sermon on the mount, and then it ends with the all of this. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about, you know, today is the olive discord. Uh, so the second point that he pointed out, he said the sermon on the mount. Is about rules of the kingdom, mm -hmm. about how to live. Right. What we should do. What, what we is should. expected out of right. a follower. He said the olive discord is about the return of the king. Right. And what a person that follows the Lord should expect. I see it. Yeah. There you go. The third one. He said, before the sermon on the mount, he was baptized. <clears throat> After the olive discord, he was buried. So, it's like you're when you're baptized, you're basically signifying that you're buried in the water, mm -hmm. and then he was physically buried. buried. When, yeah, exactly. So the fourth one, he he said before the summer on the mount, he conquered the tempter. Remember, he was in the wilderness. Yeah, that's right. Forty days, forty nights. So after the olive discord, he conquered death. Yeah. Okay, and here's what you was asking. Uh, Matthew 24 is end time prophecy and it's the direction of the age or what we can expect right. in that age. Right. And he said Matthew 25 is end time parables and it's about the end of the age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Matthew 24, he said, is God's judicial dealings with mankind, how God is going to deal with man. He said Matthew 25 is God's judgmental dealing with mankind because Matthew 25 is about the end and 
how God is going to judge. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what you was asking. He said, in these two chapters, Matthew 24 and 25, God deals with the nations, the Jews, and the church. Now, here's the key. Here is a key thing right here that we're going to look at. He said, Matthew 24 was a topical sermon, not a chronological sermon. And anything that's chronological means it goes in order. Right, it's on a timeline and it's it's in order. But Matthew 24 and 25 is topical. So it's not chronological. No, because Jesus is in Matthew 24... He's going to talk about, at the start of the chapter, the, the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. At the end of the chapter, he talks about the church, mm -hmm. with the church is not going to be here during the tribulation right. period. Right. But while he does that, he's talking about topics. It's about topics. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he says, <clears throat> here's the last one, then we'll get started. He said, God dealt with three topics in the order of history. God has dealt with three topics. He said the first 2,000 years, he dealt with the nations. After Abraham, for 2,000 years, he dealt with the church. Mm -hmm. And after Pentecost, he has dealt with the church for the last 2,000 years. Right. So he started out dealing with the nations. Then after Abraham, he dealt with the Jews. Mm -hmm. After Abraham... Right, because then it was the Jews, and it was Egypt, and it was the slavery and the freedom and all that delivery. Then after Pentecost, though, it's been the church. Right. Okay, now we can get started here in Matthew 24. I don't know how much we get done, but this is so good. <coughs> so we'll start Matthew 24, <clears throat> and uh, I'll just read. I want to read uh, these three verses right here. So Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him and to show him the buildings of the temple. So they're really proud. They're showing off the temple Look and how here, pretty Jesus. it is yeah. and how big and impressive. And, and it was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So he's saying this whole thing is going to be torn down. <laughs> this building y'all are really <laughs> proud of is going to be torn apart. And that's what he tells them. And uh, in verse 3, we'll come back to it several times, but as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us what shall these things be? When shall these things be? Well, they're talking about when will not one stone be left upon another. Mm -hmm. That's what they're asking. Yeah, yeah, they're asking when, when can we expect this? How yeah. will we know that this is about to happen? Because that's what he told them. Yeah. Okay. Then they asked him two more questions. And when... And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Remember I said it's it's in topics. It's a mm -hmm. topical sermon. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to answer that last in this chapter. Mm -hmm. right. And the last question, he's going to answer first. Mm -hmm. And the first question is, and what shall be the end of the world? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And what shall be the sign of the end of the world? Is what they're asking. Mm -hmm. So, but let's just look real quickly, if we may, at this first one here. Uh, they asked him, tell us when shall these things be? And I, I wrote this right here about uh, Matthew 24, 1 through 3. And they were showing him this temple. And this prophecy, and... I wrote these notes down. It, someone had wrote, said it was prompted by the pride of the Jews. Because they're saying, man, have you seen our temple? Come look at this Yeah, temple. they're really proud of that temple. And he said, there's not going to be one stone left upon another. Okay. 
And let's just here's just a, a little bit of history about. Do you remember when Babylon invaded Jerusalem mm -hmm. and took them captive to mm -hmm. Babylon? Yeah. And God told them that they'd be in Babylon for seventy years. Mm -hmm. Well, the Medes and Persians defeated Babylon. Right. Okay. Well, Cyrus is going to be king of Persia. Yeah. And he's the one that lets the Jews go back to their homeland mm -hmm. and even furnishes the material for them to rebuild the temple. Right. So this temple was founded or helped founded by Cyrus, mm -hmm. which was a good king. He was, right. he was a good king. But he was king over Persia, but he sent the Jews back to their homeland. And the funny part about it, only a part of them went. Most of them stayed, stayed, stayed there. Stayed in Persia. Was that ne Nehemiah's time? Was that during Nehemiah's time? No, that's right before Nehemiah's Right time. before Nehemiah's time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, right where <clears throat> we could say right at, because you got uh, Nehemiah is the one that goes back remember? to get build the walls. Yeah, yeah he, to build the walls, the walls to the city back up. Yeah, and Ezra goes back. Yeah, so yeah. that's we should say that's the time. But time. it's in that time yeah, frame. Yeah, it's in that yeah. time frame. Okay, and it says here's the other one. It said Herod, King Herod was a builder. Now this is the one that the Herod we read about in the Bible. He was a builder, and he made it a great building. Herod was known for his buildings. And if you go back to the Jewish, you know, history of time of Herod, he had several great buildings. Mm -hmm. He made pools, and mm -hmm. he was wicked. Right. But he was a great builder. Was this Herod the Great? Is that yeah. Yeah. how he was known? Yeah, and it was, you know, he's... He is, he was a, he was something else. Right. He was, I think he had his, like his mother killed, his brothers killed, his wife's killed. He was. He very brutal. He was a brutal man, but uh, he was a great builder. He, mm -hmm. he wanted to let everybody know that. He was leaving a legacy, legacy for himself. Yeah. 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 But somebody wrote, it's better to be a pig than one of Herod's brothers. Yeah, because... You know, anybody that was any competition to him to get the throne, he killed yeah. him. Let him kill Yeah. Him. Okay. And it, here's the thing about that, this temple. and it, They were still working on it when Jesus was preaching in Jerusalem. They were still working on this temple. Jesus died at a... A.D. 33. Mm -hmm. The temple was finished in 64 A.D. It was finished in 64 A.D. The Jews went to war with Rome in 67 A.D. So the temple was finished in 64 A.D. And that's at the end of Paul's ministry. It was 31 years after Jesus had resurrected. And you know, now we're looking at the end of Paul's ministry yeah. when it was finally finished. Right. Well, 67 AD, the Jews go to war with Rome, and Titus, the Roman general, in 70 AD, invades Jerusalem, and he gives orders to aspire the temple. But... His men don't listen to him, and they burn it. And, of course, there's gold in the temple, and they tear the stones apart looking for gold. There was literally not one stone left to burn right, another. they're throwing all the stones down going, they must have hid some gold here or there. Or... But they was all tore apart. Right. So everything that Jesus said right there, there shall not be one stone left upon another, that, that, so that was 36 years later, basically, no, 38 years later, that happened. 38 years later. Yeah. Jesus gave a prophecy that happened 38 years later. Yeah. So the funny part about this is it's not in uh, 
Matthew, but it's in Luke. Now, why it's not in Matthew, Luke, I mean, Matthew presents Jesus as the king. Uh -huh. That's what his book is about. Uh -huh. He presents Jesus as a king. Well, Luke, if we can real quickly turn to Luke 21, in Luke chapter 21, and, uh, and I'll, I'll read you real quick, and it tells, well, I'm in John. Luke chapter 21. Real quickly, we'll read where Jesus tells or what is going to happen in more detail. In Luke 21, verse 20, I got it wrote down. Verse 20, here's what Jesus said. He said, When you shall see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, know then that the desolation therefore is nigh. He says, I'm reading you the wrong place. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. It's Luke 19. It's Luke 19. <coughs> it's Luke 19 and 41. Here's what it said. I'm reading, I read it. That was a good verse. Yeah, it? yeah, it's good. <laughs> he said, and when he had come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Jesus weeps over the city. And he's talking about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now look what he said. If thou had known, even thy, at least in this thy day, if you had known while I was here preaching to you, this was your hour, this was your day. Mm -hmm. If you had known it, the things which belongeth unto thy peace. He's telling that these people, if you had a Receive me. If you had listened to me, you would have had peace. Yeah. Look, but now are hid from the eyes. They didn't. They, they didn't couldn't see, see it. it. No. I I read these two. I know we're running out of time. No, we're good right now. He said, "For the day shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, thy children within thee. Talking about pregnant women. Mm -hmm. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. See, in, he just says they shall not be one stone left upon another. Mm -hmm. That's what Matthew records. Right. But Luke records the whole thing. Right, everything that he said. Yeah, Luke records, he said... For the day shall come that thy enemies, and like you said, it's what, 38 years later? Yeah. Shall cast a trench round about thee, compass thee about, keep thee in on every side, they couldn't escape. Mm -hmm. And shall lay thee even with the ground, they're going to kill you, is what he yeah. says. Tell yeah. him. And thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Now listen, what, listen to this verse. Because thy knewest not the time of thy visitation. Yeah. When God sent him, they rejected him. He's saying all that could be avoided all of this. if they had have just realized who he was. That's what it said. And accepted him. You know, I mean, that's what, that's what he's saying. Which is peace. I mean, he's telling them peace, but instead they're going to get war. Because yeah. that's the opposite. Yeah. I mean, if there's no peace, then there's chaos and more. And I read, I read in one book, <coughs> it said like a hundred thousand Jews were killed or murdered. You know, they went through a, but yeah. they could have had peace. Yeah. You know, they could have, mm. they could have had, you know, they could have had a lot of peace. But that's this is what he tells them. He said, See then all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be one stone that upon another that shall not be thrown down. So that's those verses. He is talking about in verses one through three or one through two the the destruction that's coming on the nation Israel because they rejected him as king. Mm -hmm. They rejected God. They turned God out. Right. Well, then Satan. Yeah, then he's going <laughs> to fill the vacuum there. That's what he does. 
you know, then here comes Titus and destroys the city and, yeah, you know, just massacres the people. Mm-hmm. But that is, you know, and it, you know, it'd be like me and you. Just, we're just making this up. Mm-hmm. But like me and you in Washington, D.C., and just say Jesus was with us. And he said, man, look at this cap. To look at the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, showing off all the big buildings. Yeah, well, and, that's uh, what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right here's Lincoln's statue. Yeah. Right here's the Smithsonian Institute. Look mm-hmm. at it. And we're, we're showing them. Yeah. And Jesus said, there's not going to be one stone left upon the nut. Yeah. Well, you know that was shocking. Yeah, of course, because they're thinking they've got so much power, that's not going to happen to them. Yeah, I mean, they think that yeah. they're okay. Yeah. But he knew the future. Right. And he tells them about the future. Okay, how much time have we got? Uh, we got about eight minutes. Okay. So now we go to verse, <sighs> this part right here. I want to just, we'll come back to part of this later. Okay. But this part right here, we're not going to get, we're, I'd like to get the first part of it done in the next eight minutes, if we could. But they asked him, you know, what, when shall these things be? When shall not one stone be left upon another? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then they asked him two more questions. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Mm-hmm. And he's going to answer that last. And and he's talking about the sign of thy coming and the sign of the end of the world or the end of the age. Mm-hmm. So they want to know what's the sign of the end of the age. Well, the next eight minutes I'd like to look at just five verses here. The first thing Jesus said is take heed that no man deceive you. So pay attention or you'll be deceived. Or you'll be deceived. And I'll just read these and we'll go back and come in on them. And he said, For many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars, and see that you be not troubled. For all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pests, and earthquakes in diverse places. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So Jesus is saying in these verses 4 through 8, these things are going to happen in all the Bible commentary that I read said verse 9 speaks of the tribulation period. From that point, we're going into tribulation. He's mm-hmm. telling what it's going to be at the very end. Right. But verses 4 through 8 in this chapter is talking about things that's going to happen before the tribulation starts. Mm-hmm. So Jesus said, these are just the beginning of sorrows. Right. You know, like a woman goes into labor. Well, before that, she has birth pains. Mm -hmm. So these are the birth pains. Right. So here's the things that Jesus said is going to happen, what we call the birth pains. It's not the tribulation period. When we get to verse 9, you're going to say, yep, we're in tribulation. Mm -hmm. But these things are going to happen before the tribulation period and Jesus said the end is not yet Mm -hmm. when these things happen you're not at the end right well that's really not what people says oh Steve yeah because we're going well he's coming back tomorrow this evening that's what everybody says it can't be you know we're we're right there but that's not what Jesus said Right. Now listen to some of the things that Jesus said. When this happens, you're not at the end. Right. Okay, here's what he says. Take heed that no man deceive you. So, 
I wrote down places deception is Satan's greatest weapon. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing he talks about. He's not talking about during the tribulation period, but he's talking about the time before that. Right. He said people are going to be deceived, and I think we, I mean you're seeing that mm-hmm. today. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know, I mean, Jesus said there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Him. I heard this this morning on the radio. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through Him. Uh, I can name off people, and I'll name off one because she said it a million times. As Oprah says, there's many ways to God Mm -hmm. that you don't have to go through Jesus. Well, that's deception. That's not true. Jesus said, there's only one way through me. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we're seeing that absolutely now. Yeah. uh, In many ways. Well, Jesus said, when this starts, he said... You're not in the end. You're not in the end yet. He said, but you're in the last days. Right. We'll, we'll put right. it that way. The beginning of the end. Yeah. You're not at the end. But you're just you're at the beginning of the end. You're seeing the start of the end. That's kind of what Winston Churchill said when he took over the prime minister. They asked him, was this the end? He said, no, it's not the end. And he said, it's not the beginning of the end, but the end of the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was something. Right. He, he could oh, say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But Jesus is saying this, and he's talking about, many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, I seen on TV the other night, there's this guy that claims he's the Christ. Yeah. And he has, it's not in this country, but I can't remember what country it's in. But he has thousands and thousands and thousands I've, I've and, seen him. I've and seen thousands his website. of followers. Yeah. People follow him, and he says that he is Jesus. That's what he says. Yeah. And he's got, I mean, thousands. <clears throat> he was on TV. I don't remember for 60 minutes or what. I was watching some news program, and they were showing the large amount of followers he had. Yeah. Well... Is that not what Jesus said? Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, and we're seeing that. Okay. we got about a minute. Okay. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Jesus said when you get to the end, wars are going to increase, mm-hmm. not decrease. Right. There's going to be an increase of war. Yeah. But he said, listen what he said, but the end is not yet. Yeah. You know, Jesus could come back tonight, Steve. Mm -hmm. He could come back in the morning. Right. But this Bible tells you when you see all of this happening, you're not at the end. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's not popular to say because, right. well, he don't, he's not preaching. Jesus is coming back. Well, I do. I know that he's coming back. Mm-hmm. But Jesus said they would be wars and rumors of war, but the end is not yet. Mm-hmm. Now he may come back this evening, right? But it may be five more years. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we can't. Nobody can say that. Because we don't know. The only thing he tells us to do is look for him. That's right. That's Be right. ready. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Brother Thurston, I appreciate it. I know we didn't get everything we wanted to get in this one, but it's good. Uh, and uh, we'll just we'll pick it up the next time. Okay. Uh, okay. But I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I want to say I appreciate you folks watching and uh, pray that uh, – you would uh, everything go well for you and Brett first why don't you just say a prayer for somebody might not right. know about Jesus if there's someone that's watching and you've never asked him to come into your heart he says whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved he said you know if we'll ask him he's promised to hear us if we ask him to come into our heart he's promised to save us whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so I'm going to uh, go to prayer, and if you have never asked him in your heart, just repeat after me. Say, Father, I've sinned. I've come short of your 
honor. I've come short of your glory and asked you to forgive me of my sins and asked you to come into my, into my heart and I'm asking you to be my Lord. Say, so Jesus, come in and say, I receive you into my heart. And if you said it and if you believed it, it's that simple. He's come in. That's right. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Thurston. You're welcome.